So what exactly is Sword and Soul? Nerd Soul. Late ill kid, at one youngster, holding it down, bringing that street geek and nerd soul. What is up, my people, today? Once again, we got that hip hop, we got that geek, and we putting it together for Talk Shop. That's right, we're talking about comics, comic book reviews, a whole bunch of cool stuff, because today we have the awesome on freeze representation with the all mother coming together, of course, in Sorghum and Spear. And if you're keeping up, last week I interviewed the creator of Sorghum and Spear with Dedrin Sneed at Comic Bug. It was a whole lot of fun. We got into like the characters and why they made it and what it me what it means to them, stuff like that. And I was I was just so charged up. I was so excited to get into this book. And when we get into this book at the beginning, we hear about this term sword and soul. And sword and soul is a take on the sword and sandal epics, but set in Africa, set deep in the roots of like the traditions, uh, the, the terminology, the uh, just the, the essence of, you know, the spirituality and all of that soaked into the story of someone who's just like kind of got that sword and, you know, kind of sword and sandal epic type feel, but just with, with, a, with a little more flavor on it. So um, already I'm digging this, I saw the art, I got to talk to the creator. I'm into this and I wanted to see what this first book was about. And this first book is exactly what I needed with something that is so dense, which is world building. Straight up, when this book starts off, we get to figure out where they live, who they are, um, and, and what they are to each other. For instance, we're on Mount Jula when it starts off and they talk about the mountain and how people have tried to climb to the top to reach their ancestors, but they never return. How, you know, things on the mountain rumble here and there and the, the mountain has its own vibe and its own soul. Uh, and then the people on that mountain have their own collective identity. Um, and, you know, they have their own celebrations and it's their coming of age. And inside of this, we find, of course, Namazi and Oi. And they're two sisters, and I believe I'm pronouncing Oi correctly, I hope so. If not, you know, Dedrin, you know, fix it down in the comments. Uh, <laughs> but we spend time with these sisters figuring out who they are, uh, what their mother is like, uh, what this, this traditional event is like, and what it means to them. Um, are, they, are they ready to break away? Are they ready to become kind of like their own person? Especially Namazi, is she... Is she looking to move on? Is she looking to go past the village and, and, and travel to something greater or travel into the unknown? And we deal with these emotions that all of us deal with. You know, when you're, maybe you're thinking about moving out of your city or maybe you're, you're thinking about moving away from your family or you're may, maybe you're thinking about going to a different college, whatever it might be, there's always this unknown journey that could be, that might be, that's so intoxicating um, that all you can do is just, continue to think and fantasize and what if and it would be so great and we we find this young village girl that is ready to expand herself and she wants to move past the tradition maybe not leave the tradition but you know step a little forward maybe add something to it maybe maybe do it differently and you have this this mother that wants to wants to give them tradition because it means so much to her and you have these daughters that don't want to disrespect their mother because it does matter to them, but they also have other thoughts and ideas and things on their mind. And even their mother makes a comment about, you know, every year this becomes more and more different. And, you know, I think she's just trying to hold on to, of course, her daughters who she loves and also hold on to a tradition that's so dear to their people as well as herself. And that's the type of family structure, the type of world building that I really enjoy. Um, and in the, I guess in the center of all this are the references to the on free, to the all mother and the all mother who created the on free here that were, you know, made in her image and how she has the ashe and how she's created all and how she is this, you know, loving being. And you continue to get those threads that are just these little nuggets about how these people think, how they work, what, what matters to them. And it, 
it kind of draws you into the world because we get into so much later. Now, of course, I got some other stuff to move on to. We got some cool, you know, some cool fights, a little bit of magic and stuff. But of course, first, Cure Brand gonna help us pay them bills. Oh yeah, check that link below, hats, shirts, hoodies, all that jazz, and once you find something you like, of course, cop it. Now, I wanna get into Ket, and that is Namazi's friend that we meet at first, but she ends up um, kind of pulling her away from her daily duties before this event, and taking her on a long stroll, maybe a date, if you will. And on this long stroll up the mountain, we. We just have this conversation once again of, you know, splitting away, uh, moving somewhere, looking for something else. And you have this kind of wanting inside of Namazi and you have Ket who is probably interested in her staying because she asked her to close her eyes. And of course she gives her a kiss. And it's something that is kind of like telegraphed. I ain't going front. Like the whole time we're like, yo, so are y'all going? Are y'all together? Or what, what's the deal? Because I feel like y'all together and, and y'all, one of y'all acted like y'all ain't together. And then we find out why she kisses her and before she can even respond, we get attacked. And what I like about the attack is it's abrupt. Um, it changes the story dramatically and it, it throws you for a loop because you get introduced to these goblins who the whole time we've never even heard anything about them. And it's almost like a jump scare on the page because you go from this beautiful moment to like, whoa, 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 what monsters? What the heezy? So <laughs> yeah, it's a family show. So we get into just this dangerous situation. There's blood, there's bone, there's kind of crying for help, fighting for your life in moments. And I like, I like that juxtaposition to have something where we're building this family so long, building this village so long, and to only be cut short by the dangers outside. Because you're brought to a realization that this village may not be as protected as we think, might not be as safe as we think, and maybe it is time for not only Namazi to move on, but maybe the whole village needs to move on. But we don't get enough time for that because we are transported to another, another area where you have Dembe and Guhiji, I think, and I know I'm pretty much butchering that name, but Dembe and Guhiji are these two, um, I guess you could say wizards or empresses of the mystic arts, and they're kind of tasked with saving the eternal realm. And you have um, this one character that is talking about, we're not going to win a war with bright lights. Um, we're gonna have to win it with blood. And I think that is something that is going to be at the heart of this, you know, at the heart of this story moving forward, because are we going to win this war with the bright light? Are we going to win this war with the light? Are we going to win this war with truth and purity or, and, you know, truth, purity and justice? Or are we going to win this war with blood and bone? But guys, holla at me. I'm going to holla at you down in them comments. Holla at me and let me know if you have checked out Sorghum and Spear. I've seen a lot of you online with the posters and the images of it, like, you know, folks from different conventions and everything. So let me know what you think. And if you haven't checked it out yet, get in them comments below and check out Sorghum and Spear for yourself. So before I bounce, I want to tell you guys to hit up thatnerdsoul.com. That's right. Check me out right there. All my videos from the oldest, newest, latest, greatest, and all that. Then hit up shop.thatnerdsoul.com and pick yourself up a t-shirt player. Don't forget to get one for them playettes. Then come back here, like, comment, subscribe, and share that nerd soul. That's right. There's no better way that I can show people that you like what you are watching. So, LA, what up? VA, what up? RVA, you got my heart. And please be good to yourselves. Please be good to each other. And remember, just because you're on a nice date doesn't mean you shouldn't keep your guard up. Protect your neck. Peace. <laughs>